Can you Dude. hear me? Yes. Nice. Dude, I, I can't believe right now. I, I always see. <laughs> I always see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, check these pains. Come on. What do you want? What more do you want? <laughs> I won a contest. I figured out the John Williams Raiders of the Lost Ark thing, and you sent me your album. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is great, man. Dude, you are, you are like the, you're like a sextuplet threat. You can <laughs> act, you're a comedian, you're a political pundit, you're a composer, you're a, it's amazing, man, seriously. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah, I tried to, uh, I, th I believe that more is more, you know, so the more I can do, the better I am, I think. Less is more doesn't work with me. I've, I've heard I've heard you say more is more. Don't you have a song called More is More? Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I do I truly do believe that, that less is more is there's so much less is more now that it's like killing everything almost. But all as a pop music is is so less is, every, every pop song is nowadays is just like like that. The beat is like that all the time. And it's played by a computer. So yeah. And the lyrics are all, I, it's, it, the lyrics are so repetitive. It's, it's the same over and over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, you can, um, I'm sure there's a computer probably built years ago. All you'd have to do is play, you want, you get like five catchy songs, load it in the computer, put in the, uh, put in the lyrics, and the computer will just spit out like an algorithm. Okay, a couple of the chords are inverted. I mean, that's just all it is. It's very true, yeah. You know? That's um, the future, and I have this, because everything is getting more and more less, less. Fewer and fewer notes, fewer and fewer chords, more and more simple beats. So in a f in 10 years time, a pop concert will just be one long note. Ba! And that was the concert. <laughs> Your long drone up and it'll be like, ah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I do. Play something just for a minute. Give me a little. I know I said this before, but you really are. You're like, um, you know, you're like, you're like, you're like Buddy Rich meets like Lenny Bruce meets like. I'm telling you, man, you you have a mojo. You are like an you are an, a, a, an actual talent. <laughs> but that's too much, man. Come on. <laughs> well, no, but it's true though. I don't mean for it to sound, you know, especially in this era. I mean, it's something, especially the whole concept too. It's just yeah. I mean, like I'm in my den. You know what I mean? Look, you're yeah. in your den. See my drums? Can you see? Wow. That a 26 inch bass drum? Yeah, that's the bottom kit right there. Come on. Yeah. I got a. If you ever, if, if Reese, have you ever played on a 26 inch bass drum, at least lately? Uh, yeah, I have, but it's many years ago. Uh, I had a 26. And then I borrowed to a, a guy uh, in a band I was sobbing in. And then I forgot all about the bass drum. And then I phoned him and I said, can I get the bass drum? A few years after I phoned him, can I get the bass drum back? And he said, no, now I just gave it to someone else. Okay. <laughs> then I played a gig like 10 years later or five years later in a, in a venue in Copenhagen. And then I was sitting backstage and then I looked up. And then my bass drum had become a, uh, a lamp. They're taking out the, the heads and then you put a lot of like bolts, light bolts into it. So I was that's my bass drum in the ceiling. <laughs> like, a like a chandelier. Yeah, like a chandelier, yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh my but God. But that was crazy, man. man. Now, so that's 26. How many drum kits do you have? It, it looks like you have 18 drum kits or something. Come on, that's great. You gotta come to Chicago. In in fact, I would pay you trillions of dollars for drum lessons. I gotta tell you, man, your technique, <laughs> your technique is phenomenal, man. Oh, thank you so much. Thank well, you. When, when did you first pick up a set of drumsticks? I think I was seven or eight or something. I think. Um, yeah, I was. I was the youngest of uh, of four siblings. I'm the youngest, 
So, uh, and I don't, I, I don't think it was meant to be that I should have come to the world because when I came to, when I was born, there wasn't a, there wasn't a children's room for me. There was a children's room for my three elder siblings, but not for me. So I thought maybe I'm an accident or something. But then I got the, the, the hallway between the other three rooms as my room. So uh, I was sitting out there, and uh, and and they play, and they played a lot of uh, they played a lot of music, all three of them. So I I I, I listened a lot to music out there. Uh, so my, my my older brother played a lot of heavy metal, and my sister played a lot of Joni Mitchell, and my younger brother played uh, a lot of fusion jazz. So that all got mixed up in my head, and then I tried to get it out on the. I had a small bongo drums. Oh my God, those are like perfect. That's like a perfect influence triangle. Yeah, um, I, I was very happy for that. So, but then I had I was a very uh, hyper energetic kid. I, I was uh, I was uh, I, I couldn't sit still and I was jumping around and I had sixteen thousand thoughts in the head in one time. So, so the drums were my like outlet to get all those thoughts out of my uh, head. So, all right. So you started you playing the drums drumsticks about seven or eight years old. You first started playing. You were about seven, yeah. seven years. Okay. When when did you start playing piano or, or the bass guitar? <clears throat> like you're you're very it was much good later. Uh, it was twelve, uh, fifteen when I started on bass, and the bass has never been like a uh, uh, a thing I did like full time. It's always been on the side, but the older I get, the uh, the more happy I become with playing the bass. So I actually play more, I practice more bass now than I practice drums, actually. Really? So, uh, when I started, I think so. Now, I love the bass. I've been playing drums for so many years, so, yeah. Now, now what, now do you still, will you still practice drums? Will you still practice rudiments and, and time signatures and stuff? Or do you just play so much now you don't have to practice anymore? Yeah, the letter. I Sometimes I have to check something very difficult out. I'm playing with this German band where we play in 13, 16 notes a bar. And that's very, I have to practice that. That's very hard. And uh, like really odd time signatures, like playing solo in, in 11 or something. That's, I have to practice that. Uh, and of course, if I hear yeah, something, something that, that I... I sorry? sorry? Well, I was going to say, if you, so if you do 13s and 11s, do you subdivide them into other chunks? Like, will you go like 7, 6, 7, 6? Or, or, you know what I mean? With 11s, do you sometimes go like 7, 4, 7, 4? Or is it straight up 11? Are these guys so avant-garde that it's yeah. wacky that there's like no pattern? It's just 11, 11 eighth notes or 13, 16. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But I, with, with 13, I tried to, I've tried to hear it as a, as a as a sixteen notes, uh, how do you say it? Um, uh, like uh, I I try to hear everything in 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 four actually. Uh, I can maybe try to play a beat in. This is a beat in thirteen. One, two, three. So I try to hear it as as four. I'm trying to have her like this in the hi-hat all the time. And then just let the bass drum and the snare drum... Uh, man, that, that's... See, that now that... <laughs> man, I'd kill to be able to play like that. And also, too, I noticed, too, when you play, and a lot of the, a lot of the younger folks do it these days, is, you <clears> know, <throat> the drop catch. You do the drop... With the stick, you do the drop catch. So one, two, three. Oh, yeah. You get that very smoothly. Have yeah. you always been able to do that? Yeah, with me and you were talking about rudiments, and, and you were standing up doing rudiments. I, I, I always were like very bored with rudiments also. So in a very early age, I thought because you're playing on a practice pad and then you play on the drum set, and it's totally different. Like the practice pad and the floor tom are two completely different things. There's no rebound in the floor tom. So I thought I had to do rudiments on the drum set, and very early I actually got a, a pretty decent double stroke because. Uh, one, my, my teacher uh, learned, uh, I learned this rhythm with uh, Toto, Rosanna, uh, how is it? Uh? <laughs> and, 
And after I played this, my double strokes uh, sounded like this. My right hand was much stronger than my left hand. And then I started, and then my teacher said, you have to practice double stroke with a, with a practice pad. But I just thought my, my right hand is super strong so because I've played so much shuffle, fast shuffle. So I just have to play fast shuffle with the left hand also. So I just put on like really fast blues songs and then I just played for two hours like this. And even fast like... And then my left hand was much stronger. It was much fun, much more fun to practice because I was just playing a beat to some music instead of. <laughs> and then my is my my double stroke was pretty fast, and I could use it all over the drum set, also on the tom toms, like. <laughs> so when you do the ba -ba 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 that then each hand kind of gets the, the 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 drop catch sort of two stroke da 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 da, da and then you put them together linearly da 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 da, da, da and you get it <laughs> I hope <laughs> I also uh, I also have played a lot on uh, I've played a lot in the streets and I've played a lot of I had this uh, um, roller I I used to roll in with like a metal uh, how do you say like uh, a small thing you can like drive things on. And it was of metal, it was made of metal, and I played on that also. It was just like, like totally dead. But I played on that also, on metal, with no rebound. And that made my, uh, that made my uh, wrists very strong, they, because I played for a long time. So, so it's also like, you know, playing pillows and things that doesn't have rebound can really, because I don't know if I've had, I have that much of like, how do you say molar technique where you catch the stick? I, I think it's very much a wrist with me actually. The wrist, the, I can I can almost do a double with with when I close the hands totally. I like I can still. It's all the wrists I think. See, that's very Buddy Richian. That's Buddy Rich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. But, but he, he was, was like, like yeah, yeah, but he's my yeah. Uh, technique wise, wise he's the, he's he's. Totally uh, amazing. Uh, well, uh, you are the real deal, man. I got to tell you. I remember because <laughs> I first stumbled upon one of your videos, and I forget what the very first one I, I saw. I can't remember if you were in a costume or not. And you were sitting, and you weren't playing right away. And you, and you were saying that it was funny. And, and suddenly you went and you grabbed some sticks. And don't you have a drum set that you have Roto Toms for the Tom Toms? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the drum set. Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly. I have a very small bass drum with, with Roto Toms, yeah. And you started killing it, man. You just, I was like, who the hell is this guy? I couldn't believe it. I was like, look yeah. at this guy. Oh my God, man. So, yeah. so, all right. So you, so you then, you said you went to the conservatory in Copenhagen? Yeah. Okay. I, I did. At that point, I thought I was, I, was, I, I was going to be a jazz drummer, you know, I played a lot of jazz at that point. Um, but but and it's it's like it takes five years. It's it's the the highest music school we have in Denmark. Um, but I was like, I, I always thought that the drums should be like a solo instrument. It should be further on uh, in front of the stage and a lot of drum solos. Why is it always a guitar solo? It could also be a drum solo. I loved drum solos. But my teacher was, weren't agreeing with me. They just said, "Oh, play the beat. Just relax, Cal, and no, not so many fills. Just play the beat." I was at that point when I played a beat. It sounded like this. And they wanted me to play like, so they could sound good on top of me. But I was like, "Hey, let's have some more drums." And why can't I use the tom-toms? We only use the hi-hat, the snare drum, and the bass drum. Why can't we use the tom-toms more? So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so in my fifth year, I had to specialize, and then I specialized in playing solo concerts, because then I thought, I'm going to do a solo show where I can play as many fills as I would like, because I'm in charge. And then my uh, careless world tour, the solo show started, actually. So, so, then, you're, you're, solo, so you're kind of your... Your... your, your uh, Kala's, your Kali's world tour. That, that's, that's my solo show, yeah. Kind of came out of that. Exactly, exactly yeah. It came, came out, out of uh, <laughs> just wanting more drum solos uh, and more freedom to play what I, what I heard.
because all the music I played was like, yeah, less is more, and and the drummer has to. But more is you want more, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then I found <laughs> out that, that, that you know, like uh, uh, people who aren't musicians can like they can uh, hear a drum solo for max seven minutes maximum. Then they are then it's too much. But then I found out that if I just have some uh, some gadgets, you know, like a pick. <laughs> Then they would laugh of the pig. Ah, oh, that's funny. And then they got a new drum solo. So <laughs> everything was totally calculated with the with the laughing thing. The comedy was just to okay. Now they laugh, so now they can get a, one more drum solo. But then as I become older, I've, I I really think the the comedy thing is getting more more and more fun to do. So now I'm like, yeah. I well, you well the, well it's you funny. do. One thing that you are a master of, uh, the, you do the loops with the different sound, like you'll loop the bass, you'll loop something yeah. you're singing, you'll loop the pig, or you'll loop, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll remember you had that big mallet and you were hitting the, uh, what that big plastic yeah. mallet? What were you hitting? What's the thing that went, yeah. what is that? I think it was a pig actually. Was yeah. it the pig? Yeah. 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 I also have these really, really, I don't know, maybe it wasn't them, but I have these really, really big drumsticks. That are like, yeah, <laughs> you know, size matters. <laughs> but if you want to play, if you want to play a heavy beat, these are like really, really, and these are good for your chops also. Practice with these, man. So, so if you want uh, a, a strong wrists, practice with these. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> where, where do you get those? Are they made of wood? What the hell are they made of? Yeah, they're made of wood, yeah. Uh, I actually played a gig uh, at a blues bar in Copenhagen, and I had to play two sets. And in the intermission between the two sets, a audience member came up to me and said, I have had these on my... Uh, in my uh, crawl space for a long time, I think you should have them. And then he gave them to me. And then I played the whole second set with them. For an hour I played with them because I was so happy. And then the next morning I couldn't uh, pick, my arms were killed, I couldn't pick up, uh, I couldn't do anything. It was just like, my arms were killed. So, so I can play maximum five, five minutes with them. Then I have to put them away. Otherwise, my are they, my arms are killed. Are they hollow or are they solid? How much do they weigh? Uh, solid. solid. They like they weigh maybe two kilos per <laughs> stick or something. They are real. They're totally solid. Yeah. Ah, two maybe too much. Maybe one. Maybe one kilo per per stick. But it's like they're pretty. Check with the normal stick, <laughs> and they're like. <laughs> Size matters to Size matters. Yeah, totally. More is more. Well, so, okay, so after the conservatory. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So now yeah. Do you, do sh you do shows now where you it'll just be you. Will you go to a club and just set up your stuff and you go out with a microphone and you just play and talk and sing and stuff? Exactly. And You're my hero, you man. You That's what I should do. I want exactly, to. Exactly, man. But I'm you scared should, to death. Get one I'll of give these, it a whirl. Check this out. Oh, oh yeah. This, this is my, this is, this is the, the backbone, backbone of the set. Without, without that, that, it would be very, and I don't know if you can hear it, but maybe I just have to, to hang on, two seconds. You know, take your time, Kelly. I gotta get a screenshot of that, baby. Yeah, then you can loop, uh, check this out. Uh. This world is the dead you know you. This world is the dead you know you. This world is the dead you know you. Dig it a day, dig it a day, dig it a day. Cat to the music that you didn't know you want to catch. This world is the music that you didn't know you want to catch. This world is the music that you didn't know you want to do it. Dig it a day, dig it a day, dig it a day. Catch to the music that you didn't know you want to catch. This world is the music that you didn't know you want to catch. This world is the music that you didn't know you want to do it. Dig it a day, dig it a day. Music that you didn't know you wanted to do it. Music that you didn't know you wanted to do it. Music that you didn't know you wanted to do it. Music that you didn't know you wanted to do it. Music that you didn't know you wanted to do it. Music that you didn't know you wanted to do it. Music that you
And then you can like, uh, yeah. But then it sounds like a band after like, like two minutes. It sounds almost like a band. So it's not only drums all the time. Well, you know, you was you have it made in the shade, and you've earned it because you're a great drummer and you're a great bass player. You're like the you you could be the one man. You could do one man Steely Dan shows, man. <laughs> do you know what, you could you could rake in the cash like. Yeah, exactly. But that's. I made a video, video called The Ultimate Soup, Pork Roast, and Ice Cream Drummer that was like a... I, I saw that you, one. I just saw that one. one. When you're doing what I do, a lot of people are just saying, yeah, but Kelly, he's the funny one. And then they never listen to what I play, actually, because in, 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 in the music scene, if you do funny stuff, you are on the, totally on the sidelines. Uh, the serious musicians are in here, and they play super good, and uh, super good, but the funny ones are out here. But I don't care because I have so much fun. But one of the, if you want to do what I do, one of the bad sides is that other musicians put you into this box that is, oh, he's the funny one. So we don't have to like listen to if he can play anything because he's just, everything is just for fun with him. And that is not true. I, I actually do a lot of politics and stuff, but but that's that's how the, the scene works nowadays. Well, yeah, but you could smoke them like a Cornish hen, man. You, 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 your skill, <laughs> Your skill in Musicianburg, I mean, do I mean you're top tier, bro. I mean, you are. I mean, it's I mean, it's just anybody with with ears. It's a fact. I mean, when I first saw, in fact, <laughs> when you talk about that point, you know, the, remember when I was t joking around with you? I said sometimes your videos will seem sort of extra Denmarky. Do you remember what I said that yesterday? We were yeah, yeah, it was so funny. I was I was referring actually to the pork the pork soup. Oh, I nice. I was referring to, and um. You know, it's kind of like with Led Zeppelin, they have that song like all carrot pea pod or something. But I, you, it's a long story. I wouldn't even go into it. But it's, it's what I'm saying is, is you have, dude, you have the package, man. Your, 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 your ability to play and put, <laughs> and put on a show and compose. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't be, have your own network on cable, man. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> With the Denmark thing, I actually did some open mics in Los Angeles at one point because I was at this uh, world championship, a uh, loop station championship. I was the Danish, uh, no, the Scandinavian uh, champion. So I, gave, I came to Los Angeles and I did some open mics where I come in with a snare drum as a stand-up comedy open mics. So I come in with a snare drum and a hi-hat <laughs> and, and the loop station. And then I did, one night I remember I did like a hip hop music as Mozart and Beethoven would have done, like uh, like classical hip hop. So, And then afterwards I was, I was talking to a uh, Afro, how is it, African American uh, uh, stand-up comedian. And I asked him, I, I had an addictive one, I asked him, what did you think about my show? <laughs> and he said, it was very white, but very dope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so you want? So you're saying then you want a contest as as you went to Los yeah. Angeles as as a, as when you say a looper like your skills playing and looping yeah. and stuff with the device you just had you, yeah. you came in number one. Yeah, in Scandinavia, uh, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Yeah. God, man, you know you could as a side gig you could make videos under another channel name on YouTube on on tutorials on how to do that. Oh yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, but but. You, uh, loop station is actually it's it's like playing the bass. It's just an instrument, and it what you put into it, you get out of it. So if yeah. you are if you are a good player, it's very easy to loop. Yeah. And, and if you are like not if you're not super tight or you, you're running in tempo and stuff, it, it's bad. <laughs> but it's it's very good to also to become better like to listen to yourself when you loop live with the audience. You are on it because you know you're recording the next four bars on the bass or singing, so it has to be super good. Otherwise, it gets looped again and again with shitty like pitch or shitty uh, time. There's nothing worse. So you get more like you 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 get the um, practice in like concentration. Now I'm fucking nailing it. <laughs> that's 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 the that's the good thing with it. It's when I have. Um, uh, pupils are pupils is that called yeah 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 man. yeah, yeah. I, I tell them use a loop station and, and listen to yourself and if you're able to like loop 
a cool beat like five times in a row, not just one time and you were lucky. If you can do it again and again and again, you have super time and it, and it's a good way to hear yourself and your own time. Actually. Yeah, right. So right. I love the for everybody. Now, what, what is yeah. the loop station you have? Is it the loop station? Is it the BOSS, B-O-S-S? Okay. It's not the biggest one. It's the one. Uh, uh, There's one bigger than this where you have four channels here. This only has two channels, so you can, so you can like, uh, you can have like one channel here. Then I can do something completely different here. Then I can do then I can do the pig is on one channel and my, and my voice is on another channel. Then, I can do then you can, uh, can you have uh, Then you have effect. So it's a super machine. It's, it's, it's so fun to use. I gotta tell you, man. The one you just did, save that. The the can you save that? What you do 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 do? Can you save that? Can you give me like five minutes of that? It's too late. I I already already erased. It's already gone. It's already <laughs> gone forever. Now you do studio work too, right? You said you 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 for for bass and for drums for other yeah. bands. Do you you do that like to help but like pay the bill? Yeah. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just made a record with the German band. Uh, I just heard some uh, final mixes. It's, it's a record that will come out at uh, December in December. Uh, and then I just made my own record, uh, more is more. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, and now I'm actually working on a new record. And I just because I wanted to do a record that was um, because you know that in in Europe we have this music called uh, Twelve step music it's it's kind of classical music where you have to go <laughs> you have to play in all the keys and all 12 keys you can't stay in one key you have to go it's a very avant-garde thing but then i thought yeah it's it's but you know classical modern classical music eh? but then i thought what about you you had like a 12 tempo music not staying in one tempo like like accelerating and going down. It's a very powerful thing when a, when a song just gets faster and faster and faster. It's very, the, the audience, audience reacts very to it in a very- Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's yeah, especially exactly. if you do so, it- So well, I wanted to do a record that was like, where the tempo is like all over the place. I would love to do that. And then I actually, uh, uh, I have been uh, almost friends with an uh, American drummer called uh, Tom Brechtlein. He played with uh, Robin Ford and uh, Chick Corea. And I actually asked him yesterday if he wanted to play on like two tracks. So, so Tom Brickland will play on the, on the next record. Uh, oh, we'll do a, cool, man. Yeah, that that we'll do, do a chase and, and, and he, he has, has a drum drums. solo. And, yeah. Oh, dude, that's, so that's outstanding, man. Oh, my God. Wait, yeah, it's going to be fun, yeah. Is Tom? Tom, Tom Brickline. Uh, he has I'm this amazing shuffle. shuffle. You have to check him out. He's so fucking great. great. Uh, he I plays shuffle where he plays the offbeat in the hi-hat. It's 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 crazy. He's really good. Oh, I know what you mean. He plays. Uh, so, wait. So he'll play. Was would he play? Wait a minute. You, you I I got. I know. I think I know. I think I know what you're talking. You're talking about this fella. Uh, yeah, it's very hard to see. But I think so. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. So so now, did you meet him recently? We haven't met. It's like this. He just he. I think he saw one of my videos and and like contacted me. And like said he was a fan or something. And then I said, Oh come on, man! I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> so and then we were like, we had, we have just been talking a bit. And then I, for a long time, I ha I've always it was always me who played the drums on my records. And I thought about what why not like have a, like a really good drummer that so I could do the bass and uh, maybe have a drum chase and yeah. So then I asked him, and he wanted to do it. So it's 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 really great. So that's my future project. Is it's the that record? I, I'm I'm trying to compose for that record now. Now, all right. So now, typically, will you spend like how? What, what what's the shortest amount of time you've written a song? Have you ever written a song in like three minutes? I mean, essentially, yeah. you kind of do when you're sitting here behind the drums and you're singing <laughs> and you got the the book. But I mean, lyrics and everything, like the whole gig. Can you crank yeah. them out? The songs? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
actually my my uh, my show took uh, like uh, the next level I, like if five years ago i think i had a, a radio program in danish radio and and the program was me in a studio with a drum set loop station keyboard and bass and it was live and then people could phone into into the studio and and give me impossible uh, musical tasks like play uh, Neil Young as Metallica would have done or something. And then I just put down the phone and then I just played it like, in, I didn't have time to think or like, so that was like instant composition and I had to improvise lyrics. And sometimes it was really bad, but sometimes it was really good also. <laughs> so so uh, when, you, when you do so much improvising, of course, sometimes it goes not good, but, but the few times when it's good, it's really, really uh, exhilarating because it's like jumping out of, you know, like a cliff, and you don't know if there's water down there. It's it's a very uh, crazy feeling. But there, I, I did a lot of compositions, in the, and I still play some of them actually now because they were so fun to play. And do I made them in. Do you have those recorded? Like, was that was that radio show? Was it recorded? So you. It was recorded. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I, I still I, I did a song called Monkey Me, Monkey You, where a, a guy wanted to hear. Um, <laughs> He wanted to hear, what was it? Oh yeah, uh, Tibetan uh, uh, monk music. In, in Tibet, they have these uh, monks who, uh, <laughs> like, they can do like uh, two notes in one because they shout so crazy. And they have these crazy rhythms. And he wanted that combined with the uh, pop, ABBA music. Like. And then I made a song called Monk, uh, the chorus is like, Monkey me, monkey you, uh huh. Pick a fruit and start to chew. Monkey me, monkey. And I do some crazy looping, but I still play that song because it was so fun to to do. And I also played um, uh, a Rage Against the Machine as Buddy Rich would have done. That was a, that was another one. I still play that too, and it was super fun to play. So 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 a lot of those I still play. Um, yeah, of course. When you do like that, the, the lyrics are the hard, the hard thing. Yeah, yeah. To so yeah, like, yeah. So so like uh, make, make lyrics and and, uh, and uh, with rhymes and everything. So so sometimes it goes. I, that was like five times I had to stop. Like, okay, I'm sorry, this is too bad. I have to stop the song <laughs> on live radio. <laughs> that was pretty shitty. But then again, another funny thing was that when you when you play and you're like been playing for five minutes and you think you have killed it and then it's over and it's just total silence in the studio because you're all alone <laughs> you're like oh that was good uh, you're, you're like used to like some applause or something but i was just total silence <laughs> crickets no listen yeah, crickets. Man, I, I i gotta tell you i just we gotta we gotta i wanna if we can interview a couple times because i oh, it's, fine, it's we, I, so i gotta tell you man it's just out of hand so but do you want to do you want to play um do you want to do a, make up a quick song with your looper and, and, and give me some doubles yeah. and some crazy stuff on the drums? Yeah, I can do that. Maybe I could play the, I could play, this is Rage Against the Machine as Buddy Rich would have done. Yes. And, and maybe it would sound crazy for you, but you'll get a sound where you can hear any, everything. No, oh, no, that's cool, man. Bang it out. More is more. gonna kick your ass some of those that play jazz are the same that's gonna kick your ass some of those that play jazz are the same that's gonna kick your ass some of those that play jazz are the same that's gonna kick your ass now do what Kelly told you 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 
Now do what Kelly told you. Now do what Kelly told you. Now do what Kelly told you. Come on! Now do what Kelly told you. Those who say that computers can swing are those who use all the truth to sing. Those who say that computers can swing are those who use all the truth to sing. Those who say computers can swing are those who use all the truth to sing.